You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Nothing else will do. Amen. Yeah, every time we play that song, as I've heard it a few times, right, as the young guy is singing, amen, like the deer panteth for the water, so my soul longs for thee. It's normal for us in our spirit to long to not only be connected to the Lord, but it's normal for us to long to be connected to each other, amen? We need those connections. We need those times of impartation and those times of clarity, amen? And so, uh, if we could just wave at each other, tell each other it's good to see everybody this morning, amen? Amen, this is, we wanna release our trailblazers, amen? Go forth and uh, receive what the Lord has for you today, amen? But there's, there's, there's such a need for community, there's such a need for relationship, amen? I don't know about you guys, but I'm not afraid to say, I, to say, I need each one of you guys, amen? amen? I need each one of you guys, amen? And before worship started this morning, amen, I was just kind of reminded in John 14 and 1, I don't believe that's where we're going, amen? But Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. He said, trust in God. He said, trust in me also, amen? But right before that, at the end of chapter 13, he just dropped a bomb on Peter. He said, before the rooster crows three times, you're going to deny me. And so he reveals an aspect of the future that shakes Peter to his core, and then he circles right back around and says, let not your heart be troubled. I know what I just said mess with you, but don't let what you just heard move the posture of your heart into a place that I'm not sending it. Amen. Don't let news take you places that I'm not sending you. Amen. No, y'all didn't hear me, okay? Because the news is doing a great job of that right now, okay? It's taking people's hearts places that the Lord never intended for their heart to go. He told Peter a truth because Peter was boasting in his own ability. That's the only reason he said that you are going to be in a place of struggle. He never intended on saying that, but based upon Peter's boast, the Lord said, okay, let me, let me, let me help my son, okay? <laughs> let me settle him a little bit. Even when we get news that tries to mess with us, even when we get news that tries to shake us, even when we get news that try to move with us, the word of the Lord is still, let not your heart be troubled. Right, what we heard is real. Let not your heart be troubled. Amen. What we heard makes sense. Amen. Let not your heart be troubled. Amen. What we heard makes us say, dang. <laughs> let not your heart be troubled. Say, I have a choice in the matter. Come on, say, I have a choice in the matter. One more time, say, I have a choice in the matter. Amen. I want to I wanna share a quick exhortation before we go to Matthew chapter 5. If you could turn to 2 Peter chapter 3, amen. 2 Peter chapter 3. I want to share a short exhortation and I want to at least lay a little bit of foundation today about what does life look like inside of the kingdom, amen? But I want to share this, amen, real quick to just try to encourage us. Sort of as a reminder, okay? Second Peter chapter 3, amen? We are in a war with the kingdom of darkness over the eternal future of humanity, individually and corporately. Two kingdoms are trying to be established in the earth through human beings. The kingdom of God versus the kingdom of darkness. It is a heavyweight fight. Two wills and two results of two wills are what's at stake. People are not our enemy. Amen. Come on, Amen. I want to say that again. Amen. People, humanity, they are not our enemy. Yeah. Satan takes people 
captive through deception to do his will. Uh-oh. Christ fights to free people from deception, captivity, and oppression to do his will. So what we're seeing in the earth today is we are literally seeing a fight over two wills. And if we don't have eyes to see into the invisible realm, we will think that we're fighting against each other. But I read somewhere that our battle is not against. Our battle is not against. Our battle is not against. Well, then why are we always fighting each other? Pointing fingers at each other. You're the problem. No, you're the problem. You're dumb. You're dumber. You're dumber than dumb. You make me sick. You make me sicker. You make me sicker than sick. Oh, 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 you just make me, make me. Make me, make me. You ever get so mad? You, 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 you can't even get the word. You, 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 ah! <laughs> and then we say the one thing that can't always be forgiven, even though it should be forgiven. I hate you. I hate government. I hate my boss. I hate my job. And in the moment, we mean it. But in the next moment, we're sorry. Which means, did we really mean it? Well, you know, I was just mad. Well, you know, I was just, well, you know, you just took me there. Well, you know, well, you know, well, you know, well, you know. No, I don't know. I know how your words made me feel. But see, when we know people's hearts, we give them a little bit of slack. Which is why we must have intensified relationship in this season. Not just relationship, not just communion, but intense relationship. We have to be in each other's business in this season. We have to be connected. We have to know what's going on. It is a dangerous season for nobody know, to know what's going on with me. It's dangerous when nobody really knows the condition of my heart. Yes. Come on now, Pastor. We got to recognize the war. We got to recognize the real enemy, but we also got to recognize our weapons. Amen? Amen? Does this make sense? Okay. But mark this. But be aware of this. There will be difficult times. There will be violent times. There will be challenging times. There will be contentious times. There will be very frustrating times. <laughs> In the last days. People will be lovers of themselves. Lovers of money. Boastful. Proud. Abusive. Disobedient to their parents. Ungrateful. Unholy. Without love unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. <laughs> Having a form of godliness, but denying its power, have nothing to do with such people. Don't judge them, but definitely put distance in between you and them. They're not the enemy. Win them if you can, but don't let them infect you, infect them. 
Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Y'all didn't hear me. I just described traits of a real enemy, but we said we're not fighting against them and they're not our enemy. But they're sure acting like our enemy. But if we don't understand the kingdom of darkness, if we don't understand Satan, if we don't understand unclean spirits, if we don't understand principalities and powers, we will keep saying, you're my enemy. The women are my enemy. The men are my enemy. The people that don't know are, they are my enemy. Everybody thinks everybody's the enemy. <laughs> Jump down to verse 10. You, however, know all about my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, faith, patience, love, endurance, persecutions, sufferings. Watch this. What kinds of things happened to me in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra, the persecutions I endured, yet the Lord rescued me from them all. The reason the Apostle Paul was not bitter was not because he didn't go through, not because it didn't hurt, not because it didn't bring separation, not because there wasn't drama. The reason he wasn't bitter because the Lord rescued me from them all. Sometimes he did it. Sometimes he sent angels. Sometimes he sent people. But either way, the Lord rescued me from every single thing that I've been through. Anybody in the house been rescued from something? Yeah. Now watch this. If he rescued us before, then what is he going to do again? Well, then why are we in situations flailing like he's not going to come get us? We didn't get ourselves out of the last thing. We certainly aren't going to get ourselves out of this thing. And listen, if he can't say, if he came and got me before, he's going to come get me again. Now, that doesn't mean that I don't need to learn something. Because even though he's not the author, he's always the teacher. Even though he may not be the source, he can be the supply. <laughs> In fact, everyone, say everybody, who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Right? Can't can you see all of us, right, when we signed up for Jesus? Yes, Lord, I want you, I love you, I'm with you, and just give me boatloads of persecution, okay? How many people said that? Lord, Lord, just dump the persecution on me. Lord, just bring the persecution. No, if you were like me, you were like, bring blessing, bring healing, bring favor, bring promotion, bring prosperity, right? Bring relationships, bring my boo, amen, bring my man, amen, bring all the good stuff, and then bring me a teensy, any teeny, whiny bit of persecution. <laughs> And persecution has to come last, because if it comes first, I'm sure changing my mind. Now, notice why he said the persecution comes. Watch this, because we're always blaming Satan. Every, in fact, everyone who wants to live a godly lifestyle will be persecuted. To be godlike is to be persecuted by Satan. Because he is not God-like. Now, since he can't get to me, he has to use my neighbor. Come on now. My neighbor. Yeah, my neighbor. Right? Not my next door neighbor, right? Because my neighbor is wherever I find myself. But God wants to use my neighbor to make me more like Christ in the midst of persecution. So the person that's persecuting me the most is typically the person that's being used to perfect me into the image of Christ. The one that I want to get at is the one that God has got me at to get me where I need to be. What I'm saying, don't make me, God is saying, yeah, make him. Make them. Because in the don't make me is when I see how far I still need to go. That's why if you're anything like me, stop saying I didn't mean to. No, no, no. 
No, 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 no. Be a real. Be a G. Right? Right. Right, Tori? No, be a G. Say, say I meant to. No, 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 no. Be, no, no, don't be GG. Be a G. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. Say I meant to. Because we brave when we're in our emotions. Stop saying I didn't mean to say that. Say, you know what? <laughs> you know what? You know what? <laughs> say, nah, you know what? I meant all 100% of that. <laughs> now, I'm sorry it made you feel that way, and there's probably a better way that I could have went about it, and maybe I should have caught my breath, and maybe I should have took a step back, and maybe I should have slowed down a bit, and maybe I should have, it shouldn't have been all gas, no break that day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Talk to that part of it. Because if I don't mean it, then why have I said it 10 times? <laughs> in fact, everyone who wants to live a godly lifestyle in Christ. So the persecution comes because I'm trying to be godlike. Which means the persecution causes me to retreat back into being not godlike. Because when I wasn't being God-like, I wasn't being persecuted. Everybody liked me. <laughs> Everybody was with me. Right, Mom? People had coffee for me. People had donuts for me. People were cheering my name. My name was in bright lights. Everybody liked me. Everybody loved me. He's such a good guy. He'll give you the shirt off of his back. He'll do anything for you. He's such a wonderful person. And everybody was like, rah. Right. Here comes Mark. Here comes Jackie. I love them, right? And we loved it, too. It was just stroking our little ego. Tell me how good I am. Right. And then we fooled around and made a decision, uh-oh, publicly. See, it's easy to be godly at home, <laughs> particularly if it's just me. <laughs> But when I get serious and say, I'm getting ready to take God to work, guess what's coming? Persecution. It's in the word, y'all. Some of y'all look like this is the first time I didn't heard this. I promise it's always been in 2 Timothy, right? This isn't, this isn't my interpretation, right? Everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ will be persecuted. Watch this. While evildoers and imposters will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. So we can stop saying, God, what's happening? They will go from bad to worse. Lord, why don't you do something? I am. I am perfecting my church in the midst of evildoers and imposters. They're becoming more ungodly, and I'm using the persecution to make you more godly. But, 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 Father, I got a question. Yes, my son. Yes, my daughter. I don't like persecution. Can we do it another way? <laughs> Can we take the easy road? Father says, no, because the imposter is on the easy road. Some of us are like, okay, I want to be on the easy road. <laughs> But as for you, continue in what you have learned, watch this, and have become convinced of because you know those whom you have learned it from and how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Tell the person next to you, say it's going to get worse. No, 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 no. Some people, their mouth didn't move because they can't even budge to say that. Now, if I said, tell your person next to you, you're going to be blessed, they'll be like, bless, bless. I'm blessed. Uh-uh. Say, it's not that kind of party day. The word said... That they're going to go from bad to what? And notice what he said is going to increase. More deception, more evil, 
and more people being deceived. See, uh, see, the Holy Spirit is level setting us today because we've got to open our eyes wide for the times we're living in. There's a lot going on in the country. <laughs> High gas prices, food shortages, coming out of COVID, gun laws, gun reform, decisions on abortion, all kind of stuff going on. Juneteenth. <laughs> And everybody wants to stand and say what the Lord is saying, but the scripture does a good job of saying what the Lord is saying. So if it's going to go from bad to worse, instead of being afraid, I need to settle myself. Every time it gets worser, I know that's not a word, I can't be shook. He told us what to are, are we reading the same Bible? Yes. And how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Either he's telling the truth or he's lying. Well, I just don't understand why... It's only got to be one way. It's not because I said so. He said so. And people get mad at me because they can't get to him. Right. And that's part of the persecution. Well, why does it have to be one way? Because that's what he said. Well, why did he say it? Because he's God. Well, why is he God? Because he's always been that. Well, why has he always been that? And people will wear us out with questions that don't intend on doing anything. And we at home praying and studying and coming up with answers and letting them wear us out. And we show up with answers, and now they got another issue. It's not an understanding issue. It's a submission issue. And until I submit to the fact that he said that there's only one way, I won't understand. Now, we know that they understand because that's why you're mad. So that's why you're mad. You ever notice that's our go-to? People do something and then they make us mad and then we say we don't understand. Oh, you understand. If we didn't understand, our emotions wouldn't be responding. That's why when people call us out our name, if that's not our name, stop answering like that's our name. That's not my name. You walk me talking about, hey, Steve, I'll keep right on walking. That's not my name. I ain't got time to say, who you talking to? My name ain't Steve. You better call me by my name or else I'll smack your eyeballs off. Why y'all looking like some of y'all? Right, come on, right. come on, pastor. Somewhere I heard Christians be acting petty. <laughs> all scripture, say all scripture. All scripture is God breathed and, and useful for teaching. Uh-oh, rebuking, <laughs> correcting, <laughs> and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be equipped for every good work. He said there were going to be dangerous times, challenging, hard. The word in the Greek, one of the things it means is violent. Nation will rise against nation. Kingdom against kingdom. The scriptures say that there are going to be ethnic wars and race wars. And that in these things, there are going to be different forms of violence and cruelty and oppression. Jesus said it because he saw it. He said because of the increase of wickedness, the love of many will grow cold but he or she who stands firm to the end in love will be saved and this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed in all the earth and then the end will come he said what should we be doing demonstrating the kingdom 
While everybody else is wilding out, walking in love. Now, here's the thing. It's supernatural. Because if you're anything like me, man, I can do it for like a half a day. <laughs> I'm real good on my days off. <laughs> How many people are real good on, on, on right? I'm real good the week before vacation because I'm thinking I ain't got to see you fools for a week. <laughs> oh, I'm real good. But what about when I don't have no more vacation time? <laughs> The persecution is to expose everything in my heart that's stopping me from demonstrating like I'm in the wrong kingdom. That's why the Holy Spirit checks me. That's why I can't have unforgiveness. Not because I can't have unforgiveness. Not because it's not because it's immoral. It's because I reflect the kingdom that I used to be when I am a citizen of a new kingdom. The real enemy is Satan. The agreement he has with us is our hearts. If it wasn't for the sinfulness of the human heart, he wouldn't have an outlet to plug into. Say it's our hearts. Now notice the first thing he said. He said there'll be difficult times and then he said what? People will love them themselves. Will love themselves. I love me some of me. It's the only one I see. It's called Selfieville. Amen? Out of love for self flows all these other things. And instead of being selfless, I am selfish. And when I become selfish, anything's on the table. Because if there's one person that I'll do anything for in this life, who is it, y'all? No, nah, it's Jesus. Come on, we in church. <laughs> ah, it's the Father. <laughs> Come on, it's the Holy Spirit. It's me. And so he gives Timothy three things to help him overcome the challenging, the difficult, the violent, the cruel, and the hard times that Timothy was living in. There's nothing new under the sun. It happened before as it was in the days of Noah. So shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. The first thing he gave him was a personal example. The second thing he gave him was preparation for persecution and the third thing he gave him was persistence in the faith. The first thing he gave him was a personal example. Amen? Say a personal example. Personal. You, however, verse 10, know all about my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, faith, patience, love, endurance. See, those were the good things. But he doesn't just show him the good things. Watch this. Persecutions Sufferings, what kind of things happened to me in Antioch, Iconium, Lystra, the persecutions I endured, and listen how he ends it. Yet the Lord rescued me from them all. It is so powerful. How many of us have been through something? I'm talking about some short enough trauma. And guess what? I can see you, you can see me. The Lord rescued us. So, what should we be telling people? How the Lord rescued us. We shouldn't just be telling them about the trauma. We should be telling them about what God will do in the midst of the trauma. That's the example. And man, say it's a personal example. Okay, so now here's what he said. Number one, stay grounded in what we already know. Stay grounded in what we already know. If I'm grounded, I can't be moved. Brother Josh, come here right quick. Yes, sir. Don't, uh, don't hurt me, okay? <laughs> okay. Try to pull me. <laughs> I wish Noah was here. Yes, sir. <laughs> pull me again. <laughs> this is what life looks like. See, we got this Christianity where nothing's pulling us. Mm. Don't go nowhere. That's not real life. Okay. In this life, we're going to have stuff pulling us. Okay, okay, okay. 
We're gonna have stuff pulling now, it's okay? Brother Cal, come here right quick. Come, come here. All right. And, and, and uh, D'Anthony, come here, come here, come here, hurry up. No, no, on this side, Cal, on this side. On this side, on this side, on this side, okay. 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 Brother, Brother D'Anthony, get behind me, man. Get behind me, behind me, behind me. Okay. Hold me, bro. Help me stay focused. Help me stay grounded. Uh, stuff is pulling, but the Holy Spirit is in me, helping me to stay still. Sometimes, sometimes. Oh. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Real life. We don't need new revelation. We're struggling with what we got. People talking about, let me tell you what the Lord told me. Man, let me tell you what I read, okay? Stay grounded in what we already know. Principal Thomas, if you, if you don't know enough to get out the third grade, where should you stay? Till you ready to go to where? Doesn't make a difference how much your people want you to go. Because <laughs> your people don't want to deal with the shame of having to put a little more work in. Stay grounded in what we already know. Does that make sense? Okay. So, <laughs> personal example. Okay. Now, we all saying amen. Okay. Well, then here's the question. Who's your Paul? Well, sir. Yeah, Who's on. your Paul, Timothy? Come on now. Woo! Yeah. That's all. Who's our Paul? Personal example. Number two, don't be surprised by what we see because the scripture already told us what to look for. Don't be surprised by what we see because the scripture already told us what we were looking for, okay? Does that make sense? Yes. Stay grounded in what we know, amen? Stay grounded in what we know, amen. Come on, Father, in Jesus' name. Pastor, you bring me my Bible. Stay grounded in what we know, amen? The devil is a liar. Stay grounded in what we know, amen? 2 Timothy chapter 3. Now that's never happened before. Isn't that interesting? Amen? Amen. Now it wants to come back. <laughs> in fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ will be persecuted. While evildoers and imposters will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. Deceiving and being deceived. Amen? Stay grounded in what we know. Number two, amen. Prepare for persecution. Stay on the right path. Stay on the right path. Don't be surprised by what we see. We see godly people being persecuted, and we see evil people getting worse. Can you believe what you saw? I can't believe this is happening. Lord, are you aware? Lord, do you see? Lord, are you concerned? Yeah, I wrote it. <laughs> Don't be surprised by what we see. The scripture is telling us what we're going to see. Is, is, is that what the scripture is saying, y'all? But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of because you know those from whom you have learned it and how from infancy you've known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Wise for salvation. Stay on the right path. Number one, stay in relationship with others that are going the same direction. They're not perfect, but they're trying. Stay in relationship with others that are going the right direction. Number two, stay connected to the scriptures. 
staying connected to the scriptures, right? Listen to what he said. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and become convinced of. Why? Because you know those from whom you have learned it, number one. And number two, how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen? And then number three, stay in the truth of the faith. All scripture is God-breathed and useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Now, not only do we stay connected to the truth of the faith, but watch this. Stay connected to the scriptures as a son and daughter. Watch the things that the Lord is going to use the scriptures to do in our lives. Teaching. Say teaching. teaching. Say rebuking. rebuking. Say correcting, correcting and training. And training. Teaching, teaching. Rebuking, rebuking. Correcting, correcting and training. And training. Teaching. teaching rebuking. rebuking correcting, correcting and, training. and training. If I'm in the scriptures and I'm not experiencing these four things, what scriptures am I reading? Four things that the scriptures should do in our life. They should teach, they should rebuke, they should correct, and they should train. The scriptures. Now, if the scriptures do this, the servants don't have to. Uh oh. The reason the servants have to sometimes is because the scriptures aren't getting a chance to. There's a lot of things that the Lord wants to tell us one on one. But if we don't give them time, right, Mom? Right? That's right. Mom loves me, right? And there's some things that she might want to tell me, and there's some things that she can tell me publicly. And there's some things she might say, like, you know, like, Pat, you know, like, like, you know, like, like. I get concerned. When people say they're in the scripture all the time, but there isn't rebuking, correcting, and training. There's just teaching. That's why we always got a revelation. <laughs> now, not only does that happen personally, but as servants of the Lord, it prepares us Professionally, Come on. Good. teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training. The last thing that happens is it prepares us to be sent out. It prepares us to go. At the end of chapter 2, he tells Timothy that the Lord's servant must not, must not be quarrelsome, but he must be kind and compassionate, gently dealing with people, because it's God that grants repentance, because people have been taken captive by the devil to do his will. He said, Timothy, you can't be on 10 because you're going to be acting like the kingdom I'm trying to pull them out of. I need you to be gentle with them. Unless, of course, you think they're the enemy. Because if you think they're the enemy, you'll fight them. You'll beat them. You'll blast them. You'll embarrass him. He said, I need you to be compassionate. Not timid. <laughs> I need you to be courteous. Because they've been taken captive. And they don't know. Now, for everybody that's out here grandstanding, talking about Jesus sent me, everybody that's got something to say, Oh, grandstanding. <laughs> Woo-hoo, everybody's celebrating. 
Is that Christ-like? Does that reflect the kingdom we've come out of or our king that sent us? Say courteous. Say compassion. Say kind. That's the kingdom. But I'm tired. <laughs> Two kingdoms are at war. And Satan, last thing, Satan will hijack moral issues to divide the church. Satan will hijack moral issues to divide the church. Because just because you're moral, that does not mean you're godly. Just because you won does not mean you're going to win. So just be like this. Violent time. Keep your head in all situations. Do the work of an evangelist. Fully discharge all your duties. Be self-controlled, Timothy. Avoid, avoid vain and foolish arguments, for you know they produce quarrels, and the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome. Warn a divisive person. Warn them twice. After that, have nothing to do with them. <laughs> what does life look like in the kingdom? <laughs> it looks like help and hurt. <laughs> Father, I thank you for your grace. Thank you for helping us. Thank you for help on the highway. Help us to remember you're trying to in humanity. The enemy is trying to kill humanity. Help us decide what kind of vessels we're going to be. Thank you for the power of your spirit today. And while we don't condone sin, and while you will free us and you have freed us from the slavery to sin, help us to let your truth minister to people. We thank you for your grace. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Yeah.